Known as the last great hamburger stand, Fat Burger has a rich history. So let's expand on that with the top 10 untold truths of Fat Burger. It's all in the name. There's something to be said for truth in advertising, because the truth about Fat Burger is that it has a very accurate name. It really is a fat burger. Fat Burger's old-school kitchen technique is all part of what makes their experience unique. They're home to what might be the first smash burger, with locations hand-smashing beef onto the grill even today. They also guarantee you won't find any of the typical fast-food heat lamps, frozen patties, or microwaves. While you can order burgers that vary in size, the smallest patty weighs one-third of a pound, compared to the standard quarter-pounder. But the title of the fattest belongs to Fat Burger's biggest beef sensation, the Triple King Burger. This mountainous monstrosity divides a whopping one and a half pounds of beef into three patties and packs over 2,000 calories when fully loaded with toppings and the included four slices of cheese. It's a daunting dish, and finishing it in a single sitting is known as the Triple XL Challenge. It started with a delicious dream. The origins of the famous franchise are as legendary as the eats themselves. The tale begins with a lady named Lovey Yancey, who as a natural-born entrepreneur, in addition to being a woman of color, had plenty of barriers to break on her road to success. Being industrious enough to already own a restaurant in Arizona, Lovey was fascinated with the popularity of hamburgers and moved to South Central Los Angeles in 1947 to start a hamburger stand. Brainstorming with her boyfriend Charles, they decided to sling burgers right out of their garage. And the first ever fat burger was anything but fat. It was only big enough for three bar stools and the cooking space. Lovey named it Mr. Fat Burger as a marketing gimmick to push the size of the burgers. Six years later, Lovey and Charles split up. As Lovey dropped her mister, she also dropped the mister from her restaurant name, simplifying it to the now famous Fat Burger. She expanded to a total of four LA locations and pushed her entrepreneurial spirit to continue on her own, working days as long is 16 to 18 hours and moving between the four restaurants to flip fat burgers and keep an eye on business. Lovey kept her eye on expanding her entrepreneurial empire and was once quoted as saying, I don't worry about McDonald's, Burger King, or Wendy's. I don't think anybody makes as good a hamburger as we do. Well, Lovey, it looks like a lot of burger lovers agree with you. Big burgers meant big business. By 1973, Lovey opened her first fat burger location in Beverly Hills. This made the biggest impact on her business, as Fat Burger's reputation drew the love of Hollywood celebrities, gaining the restaurant even more popularity. Stars of the time like Ray Charles, James Brown, and Red Fox were regular customers to pull up a stool. The spot became a popular hangout for the rich and famous folks who never lost their love of a good old-fashioned burger. The success led to even more locations, with Lovey opting to start franchising locations in the 1980s. From that tiny three-stooled garage kitchen, Fat Burger had grown to over 30 locations by the early 80s, averaging a new store opening almost every year. Entrepreneur Magazine listed the chain as one of the fastest growing restaurant lines in the United States. Expansion continued into Canada with the opening of the Great White North's first location in 2005. It was followed shortly after by Fat Burger's first overseas hamburger stand in Dubai in 2005. Eight, which was such a hit, it was followed by seven more locations in the United Arab Emirates. Today, the little West Coast burger stand that could is now operating over 200 locations in 20 countries, and word has spread that Fat Burger plans to more than double its global footprint, eyeing another 300 locations to be added. The famous folks love Fat Burger. 
While that original celebrity connection is a cornerstone of the restaurant's early business success, that connection was never lost through the years. In addition to those early actors and musicians, stars who have professed their love for Fat Burger include comedian David Letterman, actress Mila Jovovich, and musicians Nicki Minaj and Justin Bieber. And over the decades, some of those celebrities even put their money where their mouth is by partnering with Fat Burger or franchising their own restaurants. In the early 2000s, NBA legend Irving Magic Johnson spent two years holding a controlling interest in Fat Burger's parent company. Talk show host Montel Jordan owns several franchises in the state of Colorado. Kanye West opened two Fat Burgers in Chicago back in 2009 as a franchisee under his restaurant company KW Foods. San Francisco musician E-40 opened the first location in the Bay Area near Pleasant Hill, California. Fellow musician Pharrell Williams joined in the fun by opening franchises in China and expanding the Fat Burger brand throughout 2007 and 2008. Actress-slash-musician Queen Latifah also spent time as a franchisee, but had to keep her business on the down-low since she was also a weight-loss spokesperson at the time. Whoops! Hamburgers and Hip-Hop Due to its African-American and Californian roots, the most well-known public confessions of Fat Burger love have come from the hip-hop and rap communities. The brand is so iconic due to its West Coast history that it has been mentioned several times in popular rap songs by some of the industry's biggest names. The phenomenon peaked in the 90s when Fat Burger gained serious momentum through national expansion at the same time East Coast versus West Coast rap rivalries made regional references a key part of the genre's lyrics. Ice Cube was the first artist of the decade to bring the Big Burger brand onto the radio waves, including a lyric in his 1992 track, It Was a Good Day, about a 2 a.m. trip to Fat Burger. Tupac Shakur had the same thought about the after midnight burger craving three years later in 1995, mentioning stopping at the Fat Burger after a night at the club in his track, Late Night. And just a year after that, the notorious B.I.G. noted that the best way to a girl's heart was to treat her at the legendary California burger spot with a shout out on his song, I'm going back to Cali. Good food and good tunes always make beautiful music together. Lovey Yancey was an icon to the end. The legendary Fat Burger founder had watched her empire grow throughout the years, accumulating her riches alongside her increasing restaurant count. But Miss Yancey suffered a serious loss in 1983 that transcended her business savvy. Lovey's grandson, Duran Farrell, was only 22 years old of age when he was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia disease and eventually succumbed to it later that year. Shattered by the shock of her grandson's death, the entrepreneur shared her wealth generously by making a $1.7 million donation to the Los Angeles City of Hope Hospital. The hospital sourced the donation funds into sickle cell anemia research in the hopes that no one else would suffer the heartbreak that Lovey Yancey did. As age and exhaustion caught up with her, the Fat Burger founder had seen her creation grow far enough under her watch, making a deal to sell the entire operation in 1990. That is, except for her single original location in South Central California that started it all. She continued to chip in at that restaurant until she passed away in 2008, where she had lived to be an astonishing 96 years of age. Lovey Yancey was survived by a daughter, three grandkids, and five great grandkids who all carry on the legacy of the groundbreaking businesswoman. The first Fat Burger is still standing. Speaking of that original location that was the catalyst for the franchise, it amazingly stands to this day and has outlived even the founder herself. One year after Lovey Yancey's passing, the shack was designated an official historical landmark site by the city. Because of that designation, the very first Fat Burger that was located on Western Avenue near Jefferson Park in South Central Los Angeles was untouchable by developers. It could not be torn down, modified, 
modified or relocated. But because the city had changed so drastically since the stand first opened in 1947, by 2009, it was sitting on a 35,000-square-foot parcel of what had become zoned commercial real estate. When the land was purchased for a cool price of $3 million, the new owners got creative and announced they would rehab and incorporate the site as a beacon of black entrepreneurship in a neighborhood on the upswing. Fat Burger One is now part of the Jefferson Park Complex that opened in 2014 that provides affordable housing to low-income families and HIV patients. Complete with a playground, community center, and public computer access, Lovey Yancey's enduring spirit lives on in the neighborhood she put on the map. Fat Burger had a crossover event with Bob's Burgers. With over a decade on the airwaves and a major motion picture under its belt, the famous Bob's Burgers animated series has done its fair share to make hamburgers as popular as ever. But before the hit series even aired a single episode, it needed a little help from an already established burger giant, Fat Burger. The TV series premiered on January 9, 2011. But three days before that, the marketing executives at Fox cooked up a promotional scheme bigger than Gene Belcher's vocal talent. Four specific Fat Burger locations across major U.S. markets were to become Bob's Burgers locations for one day only. Chicago, Las Vegas, New Jersey, and of course Los Angeles were chosen as the four host cities, and one lucky Fat Burger in each got the promotion. The transformations were complete with cardboard cutouts of the show's characters in each restaurant, signage changed to reflect the temporary name, and even a Bob Belcher dad joke named Burger was sold, the Thanks a Brunch Burger. A meme once talked about Marvel's Infinity War being the most ambitious crossover event in history, but Burger fans of both the animated and real-life varieties might just beg to differ. Fat Burger's ownership group wanted to get fatter. While Lovey Yancey has long since been out of the ownership picture, Fat Burger's ownership group in modern times had even more extensive expansion plans than she could have ever imagined for her beloved burger brand. That group is Fat Brands, and it has ownership over not just its flagship Fat Burger locations, but over a dozen other famous chain restaurants too. Marble Slab, Johnny Rockets, Hot Dog on a Stick, and Twin Peaks are just a few of the fast food giants under the Fat brand's umbrella. And in 2021, the group's CEO made a staggering announcement, expanding their collective portfolio by a staggering 900 new restaurant locations in the next five years. And of course, this massive undertaking would be anchored by the Fat Burger Cornerstone getting most of those new locations. The company estimated to have 60 of them constructed and opened in time for the start of 2023, but the final untold truth on this list might have changed the plan. Fat Burger Fraud an unfortunate announcement in February of 2022 derailed the ambitious business plans of the Fat Brands conglomerate, and it still has negative ongoing consequences. The same chief executive officer who announced huge expansion plans was announced to be under investigation by federal authorities for fraudulent business practices. The list included money laundering, tax evasion, and wire fraud, and sent the company's stock and reputation into a tailspin. As a result of the drop in stock market value, Fat Brands has to shell out $2.5 million worth of cash payouts to their shareholders and another half million dollars in stock payouts. It's tough news for a beloved chain with such humble beginnings, and it looks like the mighty Fat Burger might be shedding a few pounds after all. Stay right here and check out another great Babble Top video. It's easy, just tap or click. Thanks.